Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Rotor Talk Live, Season 4, Episode 24, DJI Mini SE coming to Walmart soon. Okay. Hope everybody's doing well tonight. Cross your fingers. We're getting something we haven't had for a long time. A thunder shower came through here. In about literally two minutes before airtime, had a power flick. Okay. It flicked off for a minute. So we're back up. We're running. Uh, we're good to go here. So just... Hang in there. I hope everybody's doing well. Um, yeah, we haven't had, we've had some, we have actually have had some rain this week, which is a good thing. Uh, for about six or seven weeks, we really haven't had any. So we need every drop right now. So hope everybody's doing well. Got a lot to talk about tonight, you know, and it, and it seems, you know, this, this progression, um, you know, sucking the air out of the room. DJI's turn now, so we'll get we'll get to that here here in a few. Um, just got some, uh, you know, I I actually do have some news here. Um, you know, it's just you know, there's not there's not a lot out here, guys. Okay, um, let's see who's in the house. Uh, Demarco is in the house. A great job last night, Demarco. Enjoyed being on with you on uh, Drone Nation. Um, Sam Burns is here. Ray Kelly is here. T Drone is here. Uh, Leonard Oglesby is here. Uh, Stephen Ewing is here. Good, uh, good welcome there, Stephen. Drone shots. Uh, Steve Mack is here. All right. Okay. Uh, IR Drone KC is here. All right. Um, actually, do have some news. Believe it or not, I did find a an article that that I thought was was, was newsworthy here. So um, I'm going to go ahead and share that with you guys. Um, and I got to bring it back up because I had it up and then my computer took a dive. And yeah, so uh, I remember where I found it. Okay. All right. Now, as you guys know, I look out on Drone XL, I look out on. Um, Drone DJ and on the drone girl, Sally French, for, for drone news. Because if it's worthy of talking about and noteworthy, it'll be on one, it'll be on one of the, one of those pages. So um, Sally French actually had a pretty good article today. So I thought I'd like to go ahead and share that with you guys. Um, you we all know who Kitty Hawk is, don't you? Okay. Well, um, Kitty Hawk is rebranding themselves, and they're now they are now called a loft or a loft. Okay, um, it's which uh, they're uh, wow. Okay, and and I don't know if how many of you are aware of this or not, but they have been behind the FAA's before you fly up. They they kind of took hold of this and kind of rejuvenated it and made it user-friendly. So um, I'll drop a link to the article in this description so you guys can go ahead and read this. But I thought it was noteworthy that um, because a lot of people, if, because if you're going to go out there and look for Kitty Hawk, it's not out there anymore. It's known known as a loft right now. So just want to go ahead and and have some have some news here. All right. Um, had some other news here, and I, and I got to bring it up again. I did have this up before, and yeah, it yeah, all you know, what could, what can I say? Um, you know, lightning hit, power went out for a minute. Yeah, so let's go ahead and bring this up. Now, um, there was an air show in Tennessee, and I don't know how I don't know if how many. Of, of you have have seen this but um there was a drone up there while the air force was flying their f-35 f f-35s as part uh as, you know as, as part of an, an event here well i don't think you're supposed to be too close to uh, that close to an f-35 this is taken from a drone um and they're uh, and there's actually actually a video, and I'll and I'll drop the link for you guys. Um, to be absolutely clear, this video is not recorded by Drone XL. We do not promote or condone irresponsible, dangerous, or illegal drone flying. Okay, um, 
Yeah, this is all the above. Um, this type of event always hurts the UIS industry and those who are careful to share the airspace safely, especially during an air show. The event was under a TFR, a temporary flight restriction, and appears this person wasn't in contact with the air boss in charge of the TFR, sometimes flying at what appears to be the same altitude as the performance. This would have never se- they would have never seen the drone and could have had a dramatic ending, said Greg Riverdow from the Pilot Institute. So, um, and you guys, I don't have to tell you the rules about this, but uh, this was at Smyrna Airport in Smyrna, Tennessee on June 5th and 6th. So, yeah. And, of course, you know, there's one bad apple out there, and it's uh, spoiling a bunch for everybody else, okay? Now, um, let's move on to some good news, okay? This is definitely good news, okay? There is, you can now go ahead and register for Spin Up. That's right, okay? Uh, Michael Wright broke the news to us. I got the link. We're going to go ahead and check this out here. Now, Spin Up is in person this year. You know, no, you know, we don't have to worry, you know, COVID-19, don't worry, don't no 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 concerns regarding that as far as far as going there. Let's go ahead and get this up here so you guys can go ahead and see this. Now, it's it's in person and online November the 6th, 2021. Um this year promise uh, da, 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 da. there's uh, automatic entry into giveaways, snack and lunch on event day, spin up 2021 t-shirt, access to the event, opportunity to meet the speakers in person. Okay. And I know that's something you guys will all, all want to do. Um, you know, right now um, it's going to be at Cedar Park Recreation Center in Cedar Park, Texas. And I'm going to go ahead and bring that up on a map. I have, let's, kind of go ahead and blow this up here and see see where this is. It's not in Austin, so it is a little bit away from Austin. But I'm sure Kelly's got a great venue for this. So um, you know, he does Kelly does fantastic work with all this. And you know, our hats off to him for organizing this and getting this together. So um stay tuned. Um there is more information about this. Um, let's go ahead and, um, tickets are going to be from 99 to $140. Um, they go on sale June the 10th. So if you want to hit the remind me button to make sure I'm going to go ahead and hit the remind me button. Um, so, so that's all, that's all taken care of. Um, but they're from 99 to $140. They go on sale on June the 10th at 10 a.m. And it's going to be on November the 6th, 2021. Um, and I'm sure as time goes on, Kelly's going to update this with who the speakers are going to be, uh, what the prizes will be. Um, you know, again, this is just getting, this is the, you know, this is your save the date announcement. So save, save November the 6th, 2021 uh, in Cedar Rock, Texas, which is outside of Austin, is where this event is going to be. And I'm sure there'll be more details regarding lodging and all that kind of good stuff. Um, you know, Kelly, again, he does a fantastic job at this. He's got a lot of people helping him. Um, and you know, our hats off to him for this is the fourth year in a row that he is doing this. So, um, kudos to Kelly for this. Um, stay tuned for more information. We get anything else. You'll see it out on, on build a drone reviewer, Facebook group, Facebook page. We'll get it out on Twitter. Um, you know, we'll talk about it on rotor talk live. Um, I want to make sure everybody knows about this. And, um, and, and if you're in one of the other things, it's really nice is if you're a member of, um, if you follow him, follow Kelly on YouTube, um, and you pay that monthly, um, subscription, um, you get some, you, I, I'm sure you'll get the, some perks with this as far as getting the tickets are concerned, but there's going to be a lot of information coming out on this. So I don't want to, I don't want to screw any of that up. But yeah, it's November the sixth in Cedar Rock, Texas, an all day, all day thing, um, and I'm sure a lot of you guys are really looking forward to it. It should be great, and you know there's going to be some great speakers there. You know there's going to be, you know, more than likely DJI is going to be a, a good sponsor of this and have some great prizes that has that has not disappointed. Um, and it's a great chance. 
beyond everything else and beyond the speakers and, and everything, I haven't had the opportunity yet to go in person. But from what everybody has told me, you know, the big thing about this is is being going is going is getting out there and being able to meet people in person. I, I mean, I, I can tell you when I've gone to events here in Florida, local events, and have been able to meet people. You know, that's almost as much fun, or maybe even a little bit more fun than actually flying the drones. So, but anyway, this is coming up. I want to make sure all you guys know about this um, information so you can have it have it at hand. And again, let's go ahead. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and drop this in the description right now or you know, a, a link in there. Let's go ahead and put that in there for you guys. All right. That's I dropped that in. Hey, Matt Cundiff is here. Uh, welcome, Matt. Good to see you. Fly Guy Merrill is here. Uh, Drone Views Media is here. Um, let's see who else has showed up. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, we do have spin up covered here. So that's a, that's a good thing. All right. Now, you know, um, My FEMI Mini update, I received a notice that it has made it to, through customs here in the United States. So I'm excited about that. And I'm guessing it will probably be a good week or so before I actually see that. Now, the other thing that I've been informed and I've gotten notice that it's shipped is the other battery, the battery that makes the FEMI Mini 249 grams. So as you know, we got lots of tests coming up with that. So stay tuned for that. But I'm anticipating, I, I would say probably today, today's what? The um, the eighth, um, probably another 10 more days. I'm thinking, I'm thinking probably by late next week, I should probably, it should probably be showing up. So, so stay tuned for that. And as soon as we get it, I'm going to fire it up. I'm going to do all the firmware updates before we take it out just to make sure you know, um, we're good to go here and crossing my fingers to see what we get. So, you know, that's coming up. Looking forward to that. What can I say? All right. Now, you know, you probably watched drone. If you watched drone nation last night, we expounded upon Hubson's woes and we're going to get to those in a minute. But I wanted to start out talking about Hubson, about Hubson, about the good news. OK, now let's talk about some good news from Saturday's event. There's not a lot, but there is some good news. OK, I want to want to get this kind of squared away with everybody here. All right. Um, you know, the one thing is, OK, the drone took off. The drone maintained, you know, it wasn't going all over the place. No fish bowling. And it had a good runtime at 42 minutes, somebody said. Now, I, I've seen a lot of comments about this. Oh, they probably shut off this. They probably shut off video. Video wasn't running. Everything wasn't up in here. Okay. You know what? Okay. That, that will probably translate at least to 30 minutes real world. Okay. So that is, that is definitely good. And the other thing is we actually got to see the drone live. We haven't seen the drone live before, okay? Uh, we actually got to take a look at the controller, everything, you know. Those those are some pluses from, from there, okay? All right. Everything else, we're going to talk about that here in a minute, all right? One of the things that I want to kind of emphasize, and I know everybody has been just, you know, bashing Hubson with, with good reason, you know, um, with good reason, we're going to get to that here. Like I said, in a minute, we're going to talk, talk about that, but let's look where Hubson has been to where they are now. Okay. Look how the Zeno has progressed. And I remember both when Ron and Marcus both got the Zeno one. All right. And the, the trials and tribulations they went through, I mean, having to bend pins in the controller and you know, firmware after update, after firmware update, after firmware update. You know, Marcus said for that price point, it's a pretty doggone good drone, okay? He, he, he said for, for that kind of price, 
It's it's definitely the, the Zeno one is 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 a good drone, and they've done the same thing with the Zeno too. They have really taken to task with these firmware updates, and they've done a good job. Okay, I'm not talking about the lens flare issue because that's hardware. Okay, the, the solely hardware. It need it uh, software is not going to take care of that. But they have addressed so many issues that can be addressed via 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 firmware updates, and they've been very successful at it. OK, you know, and, and I want to make sure that people understand, you know, that they that, that, that there is some good news about Hudson. OK, um, you know, I, I did not. Now, you know, obviously, there were some woes from Saturday. OK, um, you know, we talked about we talked a lot about this last night on Drone Nation and, and I expounded upon it. And Ron and I had a chance to talk about it on Saturday. And if you get a chance to. Go back and, and, and watch our broadcast. I, I think Ron and I c covered a lot, pr lot of things on that. But one thing that I wanted to say here regarding that, okay, understand this. It was their marketing team, all right, pure and simple. These were not engineers. Um, these were not beta testers. Th these two were, were marketing, okay? And who they had running the show, they needed to, what, what Hubson should have done, and they probably didn't have the money, but what they should have done was get some outside people in, some public relations people to run the show, okay? And still have the Hubson marketing people there, but have some outside people in to run the show because you saw people running in front of the cameras. The first cut at the live stream, there was no sound, so they had to end it, and then they restarted it again. There were a couple of dropouts as far as sound was concerned. And the translation problem. And, uh, and, I'm, uh, and I'm not saying, I'm, okay, let me back up. Not a problem. Not, you know, it wasn't that it was a problem. It was how it went. Because he would speak in Mandarin, Chinese, and then she would read in English. And this went on the whole time during this live event, okay? And that didn't play out too well, okay? Um, you know, it, it really kind of elongated this event. It, 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 made, it, it made it a lot longer than it, than it should have been. Now, they, I know they needed to stall for time because they needed to let it go to 40, 42 minutes, and I understand that, all right? But it seemed also to... The, the pre-video talked about Q&A from, um, from the audience, which was in the chat. There wasn't any Q&A, okay? It was all people typing sixes to try to get an opportunity to win one of the Xeno Mini Pros, okay? Which, of course, I did as well. But people were going nuts, okay? And there were no questions in there. None. I did not see any out in the audience. I mean, it was kind of ridiculous, guys. I mean... Uh, you know, I, I don't know if you guys saw any, but I didn't. Um, Chris Hope's in the house. Hey, Chris, glad you're here. Um, John Olson's here as well, too. Good to see you guys. Um, yeah, it just, you know, the, the professionalism, there was, there was no professionalism to this in any way, shape, or form, all right? Um, you saw the guy kept trying to hit the iPad that was sitting up um, in front of in front of the speaker stand, that maybe they were trying to get an FPV view, but it never materialized. You never saw anything from that. Okay, and then the big faux pas near the end. Okay, as the battery life was getting down, you know the drone was getting closer to the floor and closer to the floor and closer to the floor. Okay, and mind you that the person running the camera was also the person who was in charge of the drone. All right, he wasn't paying any attention. The drone bottomed out, okay? And, you know, the reason it did what it did was ground effect, okay, w with the props, pure and simple. That's exactly what happened with that. And then it crashed over into the side, okay? So, you know, all in all, it was probably an F as far as, as, as production value is concerned. You know, we did get some good takeaways, you know, and, and I know Marcus had a good point. You know, this is not a good first impression for Hubson with with this drone, okay? And 
Hobson needs to come out of the gate running with this. You know, they need to do a good job, okay? They need to put their best foot forward. They've had, you know, there's been so much going on with them. I mean, the Xeno 2 with the lens flare issue, you know, this drone, the Xeno Mini Pro, has promised a lot with this, okay? Um, you know, the other positive about this that I wanted to add to that, the weight it was 249.2 grams. They made sure that we saw that. So, um, but all in all, you know, it was like, uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't know what to say. Um, it did not leave a good taste in anybody's mouth. That's for sure. Now, one of the things that, um, you know, our, our friend Lauren has posted, you know, uh, they're getting theirs in on the 13th. Um, you know, I know I've pre-ordered mine. I know Ron and Marcus have pre-ordered theirs. Um, you know, and like I said, you know, and, and we, we talked about it last night. You know, a lot of people want to wait and see what we think of it, which is probably a good idea. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, Aqua show, show. I'm sorry. I probably bought your name. Hubson showed us a drone, but which drone was it? You know, a lot of people said, was it a mini? Was it, was it, was it a DJI mini? And a lot of people also said, Oh, did they, um, did they fudge the, um, fudge the weight? Or did they, did they have some, you know, I, you know what? I'm not even going to go there as far as that's concerned. I mean, I'm not even going to go there. Um, Oh, okay. Uh, drone Views Media. Um, there's a negative to the weight, Bill. Okay. We in Europe couldn't stay within two, the 250. We put ND filters on. That's a good point, Drone Views. That's a real good point. I mean, welcome, Lauren. Good to see you, sir. I just I I just mentioned your name, and you and you and you you, you popped on. Good deal. Um. So you know, first impressions. Now, we'll see when we get them out of the box, okay? And we go through them and watch our reviews. And and, and, I, and I'm hoping that we're not going to be beta testers this time, like with the Femi Mini. I, I, I hope this is, this, is, this is fully baked and ready, but we'll see. And we'll, I, I think we're going to see shortly. I don't think there's going to be any, any waiting games here, okay? I ordered mine from Hubson US, a lot, which a lot of people have done. I've gotten two batteries in a case with it. So we'll see. And we'll also see how this new feature, this internal storage is going to work. And I got the 64 gig. So, it, you know, all in all, let's, let's give this a shot. I mean, it was, it was a bad show on Saturday. Everybody agrees about that. So, uh, but you know, is it going to be a bad drone? And that's the thing we need to need to keep in focus and keep in mind, you know, the marketing department could totally suck, but their engineering department could be spot on and put out a put out a drone that says it's going to do what it's going to do. So, I mean, that that's pretty much where where we're at with that. Okay, um, we're just going to go ahead and wait and see. I mean, that's 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 what we're going to do. So, what can I say? All right, you know the other elephant in the room. Now, you re you remember how. Excuse me. You know, we talked about how Hubson sucked all the air out of the room by their announcement with their mini coming out with Femi. Okay. Well, it seems that DJI is turning the tables on Hubson. Okay. Because they're sucking all the air out of the room with this DJI mini SE coming soon to Walmart. Okay. Um, you know, there's a lot of things we're going to go, we're going to go over some things here and, and, and I want to, want to spend, spend some time on this because I, I think this is, this is important. Okay. This is something that's going to get a lot of people's attention. It's going to get a lot of people's attention because of the price point on this. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to, going to, we've got, it's got several things to go over here. Now, the first one, this was shared on, um, by Bob Morrow 
on um, Drone Nation, and you can see the screenshot. It shows a price of two hundred and ninety nine dollars. Obviously, out of stock. No, I mean it's not. It's not for sale. And you do see Mini SE on the side. Okay, this isn't a Photoshop. This is a real deal. Here. Okay. Now let's go. I'm going to go ahead and switch this to Walmart's ad. All right. And there's a link all the way up the top. So if you guys want to go ahead and check this out. Okay. And there's really nothing out here. Now it does show. You know, again, this is this is the this is the controller. That came with the Air 2 and the Air 2S. Okay, this isn't the controller that came with the Mini. So we just want to want to want to want to spot want to highlight that. Okay, one battery. Okay, extra toggles, the um, the cables, propellers, screws, screwdriver. Okay, um, 249 grams, 30 minutes flight time, 2.7 videos, 2.5 mile signal range. Okay. So, and again, you know, there's, it's telling, it's telling you basically everything about the mini. There's really no changes as far as the specs are concerned with this. Okay. I wanted to go ahead and get that up here so you guys can see that. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and go to now, Joan DJ had an article here about this as well. New DJ offering has appeared online at Walmart. It's got a new name, the Mini SE, but is it really a new drone? And it talks about that. Is it really new or just a bundled original Mavic Mini with a new remote and a new name? Okay. Um, and that's pretty much what we got on this. Okay. Now this was this was this was broken out by our buddy Acetalev. Um, you know, he first, you know, made us he first made us aware of this. Um, and not too long ago, and this is making some noise. Okay. Think about this guys, $299 price point. All right. And think about, you know, what kind of what you get with this. Now it's 2.7 K it's not 4 K. But, but think of all that you get with this. You get you get some of the you, you get the DJI technology here. All right. And you know, you don't have to, you know, people will look at Holy Stone and MJX bugs and you know other drones in this range, you know. And Marcus is is on is is on, on the quest to find the perfect drone under two hundred dollars, and it probably doesn't exist. But this for two ninety nine. If this is what this, this price is, which it probably is, it's very worthy of your attention if you're looking for a drone right now. Don't even consider the Xeno Mini Pro. Don't even consider the um, Femi XA Mini. Look at this drone, okay? And, and if you're driven by price and you haven't gotten a drone before, this is the drone to get. It really is. Um Uh, Patrick, it, you know what? It's a good, it is a, it is probably a perfect starter drone. Okay. It really does. It gets your feet wet with DJI. The DJI fly app is very intuitive. It's very easy to use. It's very straightforward. And it's a good way to get yourself going with drones. Okay. Um, it's, it's easy. I mean, it's, it's so much stuff is, is, is done for you. It's automatic. Um, you know, it, it's kind of a no brainer at that kind of a price. That's a, that's a great price. Okay. And you're not spending that kind of money on, on a Holy Stone, on an MJX bugs on, you know, some of these other knockoff brands that are out there. Okay. You're spending it on, on a DJI product. Okay. A pure DJI product. Okay. And that's exciting, okay? Rebranding it, yeah, sure. Are they trying to make money? Of course they're trying to make money. But you know what, okay? It's a smart marketing move by DJI because, you know, they it keeps the conversation rolling, okay, for them, number one. And number two, it kind of it sucks a lot of that air out of the room from Hubson, all right? Everybody had been talking about Hubson. And of course, they had the big blow up on Saturday. But notwithstanding that, you know, people are talking about 
the Mini SE right now. Okay, and it's got it's garnered a lot of attention, which I think you know I think I think it's great. I I, re, I really do. Um, you know, um, uh, yeah. Pat, see, Patrick put he he kind of nailed it on the head. Okay, it was four hundred dollars, but now you knock a hundred dollars off of it. And everybody wants to get their hands in the pie, and and that's a and that's a good that's a good point. Um, it, it, here in Dublin, the Irish Aviation Authority are making move towards freeing up airspace for sub two hundred and fifty. That's interesting. That's that's very that's very interesting. I mean, you know, notwithstanding this, and you know, coming down the pike this year, you know. Mavic 3 is coming, and we all know that, all right? Um, you know, I said last night, August, and, you know, and, and I know I, I, I'm, and I, I know my good friend Michael Wright said, but I'm still sticking with August, and it's, it's a, it's a three-year anniversary. Not that that means anything to DJI, and not that good weather means anything because this is more geared. It, it is a prosumer drone, Okay. It is a consumer drone and a professional drone. Um, you know, the, somebody had, had made mention of the fact it's replacing the Phantom 4 and the Inspire 2, all right? Well, it's going to have to have, it's going to have to be beefy enough out of the gate to do this, all right? Will they have different models available eventually? Probably. But out of the gate, there's probably going to only be one model as far as a Mavic 3 is concerned. The other thing that I have to say is this too: you're going to see a new smart controller with this. I can just about guarantee you that, all right? And it's gonna it's gonna be, you know, light years ahead of the first controller. It's going to correct all the mistakes. You know, DJI learns learns from their mistakes and they move on. Okay, what's the Mavic Three? I have no clue. Okay, but I believe they're probably testing it right now, and I believe they're probably gearing towards an August kind of a release here. Okay, I'm just. I'm just thinking here, okay? Because a lot of the a lot of the hobbyists here, okay, and professional photographers who who use these, okay, one of the most beautiful times of the year in North America here is fall because of the leaves and the and the colors turning. And imagine being able to get up a Mavic Three with a camera that is going to be absolutely incredible here. And to get those shots, here's Mr. Ron Braun. How are you, sir? Uh, welcome, uh, welcome in, everyone. Uh, sorry I'm late tonight, Bill. Uh, how's everything going tonight? We've had we've had a lot of rain today. That's a good thing. Okay, the drought's over. Uh, we, now we we looked like we were going to have a thunderstorm around uh, six seven o'clock, and it kind of got close. It got dark, but nothing ever really hit. And then it kind of cleared off for a nice sunset. Well, we had just been talking about the Mini SE and, 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 and how, what a genius it is for DJI. We kind of touched on it a little bit last night on Drone Nation where, you know, it's kind of sucking the air out of, out of Hubson's room regarding, regarding their Mini. And it's kind of drawing people's attention to DJI's Mini again. Mostly based on the price point, the, the, yeah. the, 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 the proposed price point. We don't actually know the true price point yet, but we're thinking what under 300 at the maximum. Yeah. And, and you know, Ron, it, it is so smart for DJI to do this right now because everybody had been talking about, you know, the Hobson mini, notwithstanding that horrific performance on Saturday, you know, they were still, you know, focused on it's coming out soon, probably middle of June. Um, you know, and everybody's was, was talking about it and then boom, this comes out. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's just DJI's marketing department is in gear. Okay, um, and, and you know, r really though, you know, this Mini SE, you know, it, is really getting marked at the um, at the, at the beginning of drone segment, and really the Hubson Mini Pro is really not marketed at the very beginner. It, it's up a little higher because it has, again, it has advanced features you find in the and the in the Air 2S series of drones more so than the Mini. So they said the the Hobson Minis aimed a little bit higher than than just the beginner, but I think Bill, this SE is going to fill a very very valuable spot because right now it is very hard to find a under three hundred dollar drone that not only is a reliable flyer but also is a decent 
video platform. Those things mm -hmm. don't match up very often in the sub 300 world. Yeah, you get, you know, you find a lot of drones that can fly well, but their cra their cameras aren't 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 worth <coughs> worth a darn. And then you find other ones whose cameras are fantastic, but they can't fly well, okay? And you know, this is the best of both worlds because this is a this is a excellent camera for that kind of a price point of a drone and you know the drone flies well. I mean, it's just it, it has it has everything that you could possibly look for especially in a starting drone, especially for somebody coming new new into it. And I think we, we may have had this conversation in private or, or Marcus and I had this private conversation in private. You know, things like the, the and I'm not knocking Phoebe, but the things, you know, with, with the horizon or something like that's off. Now, we're, we're all in our drone community and we all watch each other's videos and we all say, oh, yeah, the horizon, it's not too tilted. It's not bad there yet. But but, but like, you know, that's, that's only for people that are in our drone you know, niche or whatever, if you try to take Crooked Horizon video and take it out to the real world, I mean, people that, that they don't know anything about drones, all they all they want to see is good video, they're not going to accept a, a Crooked Horizon just because you tell them, oh, well, but the FEMI only costs $350. They don't care what it costs. They don't want to see a Crooked Horizon. You know, imagine, okay, say you had friends over that had knew nothing about drones and you wanted to show them some nice footage of, say, where you used to live or whatever. If you show them footage where the, where the horizon is like, this is a whole video, they're going to say, what in the heck's wrong there, Bill, or whatever. You mm -hmm. know, and if you try to explain to them, well, it's a, if the drone flies really well and it's really affordable, well, they don't care because none of that matters to them because they want to see a straight horizon. Am, am I... Am I right? No, you are, you have nailed it, Ron. Because you know, when when people what people are looking for coming out of the box, okay, they want something coming out of the box. Like for instance, uh, you know, I'll give you for instance, you know, when we got our, our our new TVs in our house, all right, we got a Sony, okay. Now I expect that thing out of the box to be golden. Well, it was beyond gold. Well, the one in the one in the family room it was golden. The one here in the den. It's it's super golden, okay? You know, it, it, it perfect. No adjustments, nothing. No firmware updates. Boom, it's ready to go out of the box, okay? No crooked horizons. No crooked horizon. You know, the the color is perfect on it. Um, you know, it's sharp, it's crisp, it's clear. And the same thing here with DJI, okay? When you get that out of the box, it may need a firmware update or two, but you know, you can you can when you insert that SD card into your computer and download that footage. You know you're not going to have horizon tilt issues on that. Um, you're not going to have a wobbly gimbal on that for the most part, unless it's a real windy day. I mean, it's going to come out looking like it should, okay? And it's going to impress people. Yeah, I mean, just think like if you you didn't get to the Sony, say you bought a, a real budget TV set for a fraction of the price of Best Buy, but you put up in the wall, you turn on, and Valerie sees it and. I don't know. It's all pixelated and it's not clear, whatever. She doesn't care whether you save the bundle, buy an off brand or whatever. All she cares about is this thing looks awful. Take it back, Bill. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I And I've, and I've done that before. <laughs> Long time ago, but I have done that before. I mean, yeah. and, and you know, and, and <laughs> you know, for us, and, and I kind of made the point before you came on, you know, we'll go ahead and, and get these sight unseen, okay? Like you and I and Marcus and, you know, Captain John and other people, you know, we'll buy these because this is one of the things that we do. And based on our reviews, other people will make a buying decision on that. OK. And, and I and I know both you for, you know, I can speak for probably for you and for Marcus. You're up front, you know, and, and I'm up front, too, about, about these, you know, and, you know, not as up front as like Brian Singleton, but. You know, we let you guys know the good and the bad with this. We give you our recommendations for this, okay? For example, right now, and I, and I was saying this before you came on, you know, if somebody had asked me to buy a drone right now, I'd say buy this Mini SE, you know, out of these, out of the Minis. So, so buy that one. Sight unseen, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, haven't see, I haven't seen the SE yet, but I'm still recommended over the, <laughs> the Phoebe Mini sight, sight unseen. And that's, I don't mean to be cruel to Phoebe or whatever, but right now... I wouldn't recommend the Phoebe drone to anybody that wasn't a hardcore drone flyer that knew what they were getting into. Yeah. Yeah. It's just not, it's something that's going to need a lot of tweaking, a lot of software updates. 
Um, you know, so that's one of the one of the stay tuned ones, and we'll find out, you know, right. what what we've right. got. And I mean, you know, look at Marcus for example. Okay, both of his his Femi minis, you know, they were like night and day. Okay. The, the the what the results that he got off of both of them. So I mean, you know, it, it's it's a toss up. Who knows? Okay. And I'm like I said, and before you start, before you came on, um, you know, mine will probably be here. I'm thinking probably by the end of next week. So I'll be able to find out what's going on with that. So we'll oh, see. So imagine firmware hits between now and then. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and of course, you from our generation, we're we're not as strangers to software updates and firmware updates. I know you're a Windows guy. Uh, you remember Patch Tuesday, don't you? For mm -hmm. for years, every Tuesday was Patch Tuesday. Was you Patch know, Tuesday, uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> and always fixed a new bug that just seemed to pop up. But each patch kind of created another bug. Yeah, and it and it kind of compound kind of compounded the problem. I mean, I worked I worked at a place where they had piled code on top of code on top of code and it got to fix problems. And it's a mess when you do that kind of stuff. It just, and it never works right. Okay. Even though it gets fixed, it never works right after that. And it's, I think a lot of times it's best just to kind of start from scratch as far as that's concerned. Yeah, I mean, I, again, I hate to turn this into, you know, this weekend PC, but in the old days, like, I used to recommend every, everybody used to buy a PC that came with Windows. They didn't have to buy Windows, but the only problem is that is sometimes the only way to fix your computer was to reinstall the operating system or whatever. But you don't you didn't have it on disk or anything because it came pre-installed. So I always recommend it. You know, like have your own copy of Windows. So whenever you get too too far down a rat hole, you just you just back up and reinstall from scratch. You know, I mean, you're. I'm. I'm preaching the choir here. You're in the. IP oh, yeah, I've, uh, yeah. I did that many times, Ron. Uh, yeah, you know, it was. It got to a point where it was. It was so convoluted. You just had to kind of like just wipe the slate clean and run with it because it was just. It was the more you were. You were putting bad on top of bad. I mean, it, it just. Yeah. Folks, sorry to take you guys, people back to the 1990s. Uh, uh, we're, we'll move back to our regular scheduled drone programming now. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm sure you probably saw uh, all the news regarding spin up. Um, it's November the 6th um, in Cedar Rock, Texas, 99 to 140 dollars. Um, really not a lot. Tickets go on sale on June the 10th. Uh, and I let everybody know about that. Um, and, and I looked and, and I pulled up the map. The, I mean, this is outside of Austin. So, um, and, and I'm sure Kelly's done a great job picking venues. So, I'm sure this is a good venue to have this. Yeah. Um, if anybody saw one of his recent uh, shows, I mean, when I say recent, in the past two, three, maybe four weeks, he he thought he almost had a place nailed down, and 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 this sounds like it may have been the place he was talking about in that recent video. So I, I and I love the idea of it being out of the city limits to give us more of a chance to fly drones at the event because before last year at the uh boy scout center i mean they had like a little like a little they call it a lake behind but it was like a pod and it really wasn't much room to do more than fly like a small drone around for yeah to days. do more than that so yeah um yeah but that's you know that, that's something that people i know have been clamoring about and wanting to get some information um you know and as soon as we get more info you know we'll pass this on on to on to everybody um, you know, it's, it's going to be a good thing. And, and I think it's going to be good. You know, last year had to be online because of COVID and this year we don't have to worry about that, which is thankfully that's a good thing, you know? So, you know, and I'm sure he's going to line up some good sponsors as he did. And I'm sure there's going to be some great giveaways. So just, you know, stay tuned for that. We'll pass all that information on to you guys. And by the beginning of November, the weather should be very, uh, you know, accommodating out there. Uh, you know, you won't have to worry oh, yeah. about, uh, you know, uh, uh, roasting or whatever. It weather wasn't bad last time when it was mid-October, but the day of the event, it, it was like 90 that day. Yeah, it was here today with 95, okay? And, you know, it's like I, I've been telling you, I was, telling, I was sharing with, with the guys last night, the water temperature is 90 degrees. Okay? I saw your Facebook post uh, on that too. Yeah. And, and, and I tell people, so, you know, I said, I said, you know, it's kind of a nice thing having that nice warm water, but you go more than two feet of water. You better watch out because I'll tell you what, guess what? That really warm water attracts sharks. Okay. And, and, yeah. and up here it attracts a jellyfish too. Yeah. And you don't want, you don't want to, no. 
You don't want to mess with either one of them. Yeah. Um, I can tell it, it doesn't often get to 90 here at the Jersey Shore, but what it does, you don't even have to go put your toes in water. When you see everybody in the water, even the people that don't go in the water, in the water, you know it's 90. You know it's in the, yeah, you know it's, it's when it's I say 90. in the water, I don't mean I don't necessarily mean swimming their head. I mean maybe just standing at their knees or whatever, but uh, you know. They, yeah, they, one of the other things that I wanted to I wanted to talk to you about because you have an Evo too. What's your reaction to this news regarding um, Autel and what they're going to be doing uh, for the time being? They're going to be cutting production and, you know, because of the chip shortage and, you know, when, you know, and, and they're going to come out with a new version of the Evo 2. What, what are your thoughts about that, Ron? Um, you know, I, we, we talked about the story about a little bit last night and, uh, you know, I, not overreacting at all. My Evo 2 flies great. I love it. Even if they don't do a whole lot of adding any software features to whatever, it's already kind of got everything I need. And they did say that the the bat the batteries that would make for the next generation would be compatible with the old one, which is a kind of a you know uh, a sore spot with a lot of users of the original Altel. What's the big drone they made? Oh, the XR Premium. XR Premium. When they discontinued, they yeah. no batteries available, but it's still a sticking point. Uh, so, again, my drone flies fine. You know, they it, it pretty much all have all done most of the firm updates they need to do or whatever. Uh, I, I'm kind of good. You know what I mean? Like, uh, oh, yeah. I, I'm not really ready for the next version of the Evo 2 Pro because the one I have now does everything I want to do. Mm -hmm. Um as I, you know, I, I, even even if the new one was available tomorrow, I, I, I probably still, unless it was revolutionary better, I still probably wouldn't buy it because I'm good with what I have. Now, I mean, like, I mean, I hate to say it, but even what we talk about the Mavic 3 and so on, I, I may not be dipping right in right away. I'm still perfectly happy with my Mavic 2 Pro. I may just sit back, watch watch all the reviews study it, whatever, I, I may not be an early, um, early adopter. Well, you know, you know, th that's one, that's one of the things, um, you know, regarding, regarding Autel is in, and we, we touched on it last week a little bit, how they have a new CEO and he has a good pedigree. He comes from D DJI. It was one of his stops in his employment journey. So he's no stranger to the whole drone arena. And I think one of the other things he's doing is he's probably wanting to take a step back. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. He's probably wanting to take a step back because I'm sure Autel is probably not in a good financial position because you know they've had they've had some issues with that. And I think I think he's doing a wise thing is taking a step back. You know they're going to wait for the chip shortage. To kind of you know work itself out and then retool and get Evo twos back out again and an, and an updated smart controller as well. So I think that's a good thing, you know. And this kind of puts the end to the talk that Autel was coming out with a mini, okay? Because I know a lot of people have said, "Wow, if they buy if they put out a mini, I'd buy it in a heartbeat," you know. And there that that kind of kind of ends that talk for now, okay? Next year, who knows? Right, because maybe this, you know, maybe this, the 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 CEO that was that was not there anymore, maybe he was against the all tell many, but this new guy coming from DJI, maybe he realizes the value of a smaller um, a, a drone, uh, you know, and uh, you know the, the the fear for a lot of people is maybe this guy's going to take a more enterprise uh, oriented since they have you know they're sort of a kind of halfway to an enterprise drone anyways that wouldn't. And well, they do have enterprise versions of the Evo too, with the FLIR camera and some other camera that you can add on. Uh, you know, um, uh, you know, it doesn't surprise me, but uh, you know, the Evo two has been out every year now, and one of the big problems is the Evo two was the swappable cameras, and really, outside of adding the enterprise camera, we haven't really, you know, uh, seen any new cameras for it. Uh, you know, like uh, yeah. like look, we already got one in sensor, but. How about a nice zoom camera to put on there, right? Um, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. what about a one inch sensor zoom camera, whatever, to put on there? You know, why make, why design it to have swappable cameras and then, then never offer anything? Yeah. And see, and again, I think, I think what they, Autel thinks big, okay, which is good. And there's nothing wrong with that. 
but they're constrained by their finances. And, and um, because, you know, we remember um, the CES that Marcus went to, it was at the last minute Autel got financing and they were able to have a booth at that CES because of that, because they had a, had a cash issue, you know? So, you know, and again, I think that a lot of it probably, you know, not having these, these swap, hot swappable camera kind of things is because of the fact they have, they have, you know, they're just literally strapped for cash. So now, I know Altel all drones is owned by a bigger Altel company that, that does something besides drones that make their money. Is that correct, Bill? Yeah, they own, they're, they're into auto, auto parts. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, from from what I from what I understand, so you know they're they're a parent company. So and so how, how how much does the parent company carry them along? You know, um, yeah, kind of like you know, just wait for them to hit a home run, and you know, not maybe they're not really worried about them making a lot of money at this point. They're just trying to hope that you know they're going to somehow kind of hit a home run in the drone market and take off eventually. Yeah, and and I would say this too. And, and, and I think for those of you who are looking to get an Evo 2, there might be some deals on them, okay? Um, We've already seen some uh, price drops over the last holiday. Yeah. So, so, yeah, yeah. like you said, some retailers that will be looking to clear out stock, um, you know, basically to make room for the, the new SKUs that will be coming out. And, you know, we keep saying these new hotel drones. I, I don't suspect we'll see any of these new drones from Altel six months maybe way past that bill. Yeah. I don't, I don't think, you know, these, these updated Evo twos, I think we won't see them until probably January. That's my, yeah. that's my guesstimate. Just and, the, and to remind the folks out there that uh, don't realize why the, why the all tell drones are so important to some people like uh, professionals is the all tell doesn't have the DGI, um, uh, the geo zones, the geo fences that DJI mm -hmm. have. And I know what you're going to say. Well you, well, you don't want to be flying in areas that are geo fenced anyways, but it's hard to explain. But but the DJI drones, they geo fence zones that are not no fly zones. Yeah. The FAA, they go above and beyond and over, over, you know, um, you know, geo fence zones or whatever. So that's why the all tell drones are important to so many people that are professionals because the worst thing they can do is sh show up to a, an important shoot that they check, they checked on their, you know, before you fly app or Kitty Hawk or whatever you use. Um, and you know, it's good to fly there, but you get there and your DJI drone won't take you off. I mean, that could ruin a professional's job or if you have the, also have the all tell in your car mm -hmm. besides the DJI drone, you just take the all tell up get the shots you need and, and, you know, with no fuss or whatever. So, yeah. uh, uh, you know, that is important to many professionals. Yeah. You make a good, great point there, Ron. And, you know, the, you know, with, with, with their, and, and a lot of times, you know, it's hard to get some of those G fencing turned off, you know, with, with, with DJI. I mean, it, you know, a lot of times you have to have to email them and, 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 and especially if you, if you show up a location that doesn't have internet, you know, yeah. if, if you don't have if you don't have internet, um, you know, to with your DJI drone, you may get. Um, I keep hating these words, geofence, but you may get geofence that you can't take the drone up more than a hundred feet or or fly it a hundred feet away from you, where mm -hmm. the Altel doesn't care whether you're connected to the internet or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, and that makes and that makes perfect sense. So, uh, that really does. So, so that, that is a, kind of a little niche here. You know, Altel does have going on. You mentioned about the, the smart control. They're probably not going to make many for the current Altel, which, you know, I know a lot of people are looking forward to it. But you know what? At that price point of selling it for $1,200 or $1,299, it wasn't going to be a big seller anyway. So it's not a, it's not a whole lot messed up because most people have bought that triple tech tablet you mentioned last night, which is only half the price. And they get like a mount for it or whatever. And that triple tech, you know, that's. I forget how many nits, but a whole a whole bunch of nits. Two, two, I'm making numbers up. Two thousand, but it's awful bright. So people have got a workaround, a, a more affordable workaround, rather than paying twelve nine nine for that tablet. So oh yeah, I, at that price point, I don't think the tablet's that big of a deal. Now, if for the next Evo to the new generation, they can bring a tablet out that's in the sub sub thousand dollar market, or sell the Evo 2, the new Evo 2, and a bundle of the tablet comes in there and that gives you a bit of discount, that, that may, you know, that's where the tablet may. That's a great point. Off. 
Yeah, that's a, that's a great point, Ron, them being able to do that. And I think that's probably what they're going to do is my guess is they'll take the tablets that haven't sold and they'll probably, um, you know, re, you know, retrofit them to do the new Evo, Evo 2s and they'll drop the price and bundle it. That would be a very smart marketing move on their part. It really would. So. Especially if you're marketing the Evo 2 Pro at a more professional user, not, in the, you know, not a beginner, you know, not even yeah, like yeah. a mid tier guy, but somebody maybe who, you know, is, is doing real estate or doing some kind of, kind of like some semi pro work, or they're really just a, a real high tech hobbyist, you know, kind yeah. of photographer, you know? Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, that's all I got for tonight, Ron. Do you have any, any closing thoughts here? No, no, I'm glad you were able to, you know, drop the story about um, Spin Up. I know a lot of people are looking forward to it. And I, I hope you're able to go this year, Bill. I'm definitely going to try to make it uh, uh, this year. I, you know, I know, you know, you, you were missed at the last one a couple of years ago. So, um, you know. Yeah, we're going to tr we're going to try. We have a um, coming up uh, first week of July. We're going to be up in Ohio for the, for, the, for the week. It's our granddaughter's second birthday. We missed her first birthday because of COVID last oh. year. So we're going to enjoy that. And then they're coming the week before Christmas. So I'm taking that week off. So time, you know, taking you time off. Yeah, a little yeah. tight for me. I'm not sure right now at this point. Um, now, you know, now in all, in all the information, about, I didn't get a chance to check my calendar yet. Is that, is a date on a weekday or a weekend? Because there was some talk about it being on a, like a Thursday. It's on a November November sixth, and we well, don't know what date that is. On the, I don't date. know what date it is. I didn't. I did not look that up. Well, while you're I'm, talking, I'm gonna pull it up real fast. Yeah, I did not look to see what what kind of a day of the week that is. And 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 two, you know, there's well, no. You said you said November sixth. Yeah, it's a Saturday. Okay. Okay, it's a Saturday. Okay. So you know, you, you could you know people could that that have trouble getting off could feasibly just take Friday off and make it a long weekend. Take Friday off, stay the day Saturday, and leave Sunday. Yeah, they could. You know, I have to take a look. I have to take a look at that and see where things are financially as well, too. So that's just, yeah. you know, um, I don't yeah, know about, I don't know about Florida, but usually you can get like a like a cheap Spirit airline flight in Austin because a lot of a lot of budget flights go into Austin. Yeah, yeah. There's a yeah. That that's something that uh, I would I would I would definitely consider because that's a way to save some money over Southwest unless you book way ahead of time. That's about the only only time that you get any kind of a price break with that. So remember when Southwest used to be cheap? What whatever happened with that, Bill? Oh, I don't remember, know. Remember you when we first started flying Southwest, they were they were the budget airline. You know, it was a lot of twenty nine dollar fares here and there. And I'm like, wow, you know, and now it's like now it's like, you know, they advertised like a forty nine dollar fare as a super budget fare now. And I'm like, wow. It's just, it's just, this is, this is your father Southwest. No, this isn't your father Southwest, but you know, so we'll see. I, you know, I'll, uh, you know, I, I got to take a look of, uh, you know, see how we are financially and see where things are. I would love to go. So, um, but with all that being said, had a great show last night on drone nation. If you guys watch the replay, um, you know, DeMarco was on, um, we had Michael Wright was on last night and we had a very special, visit from Marcus Crawford, who we didn't even count on being there last night. And yours truly was on. It's a great show. Go back and watch it. We had a lot of fun last night, a lot of talking uh, about Hubson. So go ahead and definitely check that out. Um, you know, guys, hope you guys have a great rest of your week. And as always, it's a great day to fly, guys. Take care. Have a great rest of your evening.